Welcome once again to the students in the Luke Axe class here at Southeastern University. This is your professor, Dr. Larry Aspen, coming to you at the end, can you believe it, of Module 5 to welcome you to Module 6. We're at a very important you know, point in our class as we see the end looming right in front of us. In addition, we see the holidays coming up. So this week, of course, is Thanksgiving, and I'm looking forward to flying to early tomorrow morning from Portland to the Atlanta airport, where I will then drive to Chattanooga to be with my brother and his family for Thanksgiving. I, I hope you all are planning on having some great family times in Thanksgiving. You know, Thanksgiving doesn't occupy an entire week, but it is a very important time of of, of fellowship, of celebration for us in our families. And so I'm looking forward to uh, that trip. While I'm there, I'll, I'll uh, drive back down south into Georgia, where I served as a pastor in rural Georgia for several years, and just enjoy some extra days before I'm back home in the Pacific Northwest playing in the snow. So it's been a great uh, a class for us. I have so enjoyed interacting with you in this class. You've done really, really good work in terms of your reading journals, your extra assignments. Of course, your discussions have been excellent. What a great opportunity for us to be able to dive into the book of Luke and the book of Acts and begin to dig a little bit more than perhaps we have in the past. So our focus in Module 6 is on the charismatic acts of Philip, Stephen, and Peter. Of course, they were all operating in ministry that was very supernatural, very miraculous by nature, which means that they weren't doing it based on the findings of a, a, a church committee. It was the power of the Holy Spirit at work in and through their lives. And so these are some of our favorite stories, but very, very important as it pertains to our understanding of the church. The learning objectives for Module 6 are, first of all, to demonstrate knowledge of Peter's activities after Pentecost, and then knowledge of Ananias and Sapphira's death, which is not one of our, not one of our happy stories, but one that is important, or it wouldn't be in Scripture, to demonstrate knowledge of the community's discernment when dealing with tension. Of course, Acts chapter 6 with that controversy, and then knowledge of Stephen's death, knowledge of Philip's ministry, which includes the wonderful story of his encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch, a knowledge of the pneumatic experience in relation to Simon the sorcerer between uh, the, the, of course, Peter and John and the Simon the sorcerer in the ministry of Philip, knowledge of Peter's conversion, and then a knowledge of the themes associated with wealth and, wealth and economics in the community. I see my picture is blocking up that phrase, the community, but certainly you can see that we have our hands full, our plate is full in module six and week six when it comes to some really great and very, very important themes in the book of Acts. Uh, our uh, resources for module six are, first of all, once again, in our little commentary from Beverly Gaventa. We will be reading pages 83 to 157 this coming week. And then there's a very interesting video from Willie James Jennings called The Impact of the Day of Pentecost for Life Together in the Christian Community. And I think you will enjoy very much viewing that video this coming week. In terms of our graded assignments, we, of course, will have our discussion forum. And this week, our prompt is this. One of the major themes that appears in this week's text in Acts is associated with wealth and economics in the community. Uh, Peter healed a beggar, having neither silver nor gold. There were seven leaders chosen to feed the widows. Barnabas sold his possessions and gave it to the community. Ananias and Sapphira sold their possessions, but kept part of it, of lying about it, of course, which caused their demise. So it seems like the way they, uh, they shared life together, obviously, had practical implications. So based on these chapters in Acts, what do you believe is the economy of the Christian community? What is our attitude toward, well, certainly uh, toward material wealth, but just toward that practical aspect of our life together? And how should this economy appear and be lived out in the contemporary Christian uh, community? When I moved to Portland, I noticed that there were homeless encampments almost everywhere. And it seems like, uh, I don't know about what it looks like where you live, but it seems like the global uh, pandemic has resulted in a whole new level 
of poverty in our nation. And so the church is asking, you know, now that we're kind of looking beyond just surviving this thing, the church is asking, what should we do if the church is the church in our community? What should that look like? We need discernment. We need the Holy Spirit to lead us. So it's a very, very important and very timely theme for us in module six. And then, of course, you have another reading log. You've done such a great job recording just about 300 words as a reflection on the, the reading for the week. And this week, it will, uh, again, interact with your reading in Gaventa's uh, uh, textbook. And then the thematic threads are there. You remember, there are two threads that are organized really as a discussion forum. But you're only asked to put uh, two or three sentences by way of an observation in the thread for the week. Uh, there are two threads. Both will be graded. One is on pneumatology and the pneumatic experiences in our reading. And the other is women and characters on the margins in the first century. So my grading, you know, and I've given you this information before, but I won't grade until the very end. And it will be a participation grade. So if you participated in 25% of the week's options that were given to you in the thread, your grade will be 25%. You know, if you graded, uh, if you participated 100% of those threads, your grade will be 100%. So I encourage you to take a look uh, because there are, they're not, you know, there's not strict due dates for them. Go ahead and go back and participate and it will, you know, it will help your grade at the end. Just, I'll give you a quick heads up. We've got the big, big assignments coming up here at the end of the class. Module 7 is going to be a very good uh, kind of an exercise for you again. It's a special extra assignment, a critical review of an article. So you're given some, you know, some peer reviewed journal articles to look at. Pick one of them and write a critical review. I think it's a great opportunity for you to not only explore some good, some good material, but also to exercise what is an important academic uh, discipline. And then, of course, Module 8 is the thing, isn't it? That's when your exegetical paper is due. That's when there will be a final exam. And, of course, I'll be saying more about those two uh, next week, but they are the biggest chunk of your final grade. So now is the time to begin to think, especially about the exegetical paper, to take a look at the rubric that is provided, the description that is provided, so you can feel like you are prepared and ready to go as you begin to compose that paper. Now, I just love the story of uh, uh, Philip and baptizing the Ethiopian, uh, Ethiopian official, of course, there. You know, there's a long history then of the church in Ethiopia, which is so very, very interesting. And so to see how the Holy Spirit empowered the church, to see how the Holy Spirit specifically led individuals in the church to cooperate in the mission of God is so important for us to realize that that still is relevant to us. So going forward, we want to see the Lord do something special, something unusual. Don't you think in the coming days in the church? I agree with Paul's prayer in Ephesians 3 when he said uh, that I prayed really that God would be glorified in the church. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus now and forever. And that includes our generation. So it's going to be a great a week. I'm going to, even though I'm on the road, you know, or in the air, I will always have my laptop with me. I'll jump in, check on you because I'm very committed to you and enjoying this learning experience. So God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful week and happy Thanksgiving to you. God bless you all.